Hi, my name is Paul Seal from CodeShare at Code UK. Welcome to episode two of how to build a content managed website in Umbrico. And we're using version 7.6.5. If you haven't seen the first episode, I suggest you go back to the first episode and that shows you how we set the project up in the first place. And then episode two builds on what we did in the first episode. And in this series, we are using the reflex template so if you go to codechair.co.uk slash reflex, I've set up a like a pretty link that takes you straight to the template where you can get that. And if you want to use this template whilst you follow along, um, for the website that I've got this template from, you do it's not a free template. However, you, you sign up, I think it's $19, and you get three months access to all of the 96 templates and the really good quality HTML5 templates. So it's worth doing. Um, you'll be able to follow along with this tutorial um, if you do that as well. So, And I think you can pay by PayPal or credit card. So that's what I did. I signed up to that site. I've downloaded the template. And now I'm implementing this template. So if we go to here again, we can see this is a template that we are building into Umbrico. Okay, so let's get cracking on episode two then. So episode two, we need to create some document types and templates uh, so that we can have a home template and a content template. We need to separate, separate out any column, common elements into partial views. We need to call these partial views from the templates and then we need to create name sections for scripts and CSS. That's what we're doing in this episode. So let's go into Umbrico. So if I've clicked on run with Google Chrome without debugging. And so I'm now logged in into Umbrico. So first things first, I want to just create some templates. So I'm gonna create one called web base and this is gonna be like the master template. And I'm just gonna hit save. Now, if you were used to the older version of Umbrico, you might not recommend, uh, recognize some of these things on here. Um, I did do a video on the new features of Umbrico in 7.6. So if you go and have a look at that in my playlist, you'll be able to find that. Um, so that is the web-based template. And then I want to create one under that, one called Home and one called Content. Create that. And then create one called Content. So... This website is pretty small, it's quite basic, so I've just got a home template and a content template, and they both inherit from WebBase. So WebBase is our master template, that's gonna have the HTML declaration and most of the scripts and everything like that, and we're gonna slice that all up, and that way um, the common elements will be all called from there, and then the specific things will be called on the template, and we'll even put them into partial views. So now that I've created the templates, I want to create some document types. So I'm going to, as I already have the templates, I don't need to create a document type where it creates a template as well. That's why I've chosen a document type without a template. So I'm going to call this one home. I'm going to choose an icon for it. Um, and this I'm going to have as, uh, I'm going to choose the red theme. So we'll say home. And I'm going to click on save. I'm not going to add any properties. And even if I was going to add some properties, I wouldn't add it to the document type that is going to be directly related to the content page. I actually do it within a separate bar. But when we come to do that, I'll show you what I mean. So that's the home one. And I need to associate that with a template. So click on home there. So I went to templates, choose a temp the default template, I clicked on home, and then I can choose save. And also, I want to create another one, document type, without a template, and I'm going to call this one content. I'm going to look for a doc one, and I'm going to choose red. And then I'm going to also, in the templates, choose the default template, content, and then save that. So now I have two separate document types. And what I'm also going to do is create, uh, allow under home, so I've clicked on home, permissions, add child, and I'm gonna let a content type be added underneath home. And I'm also gonna go into content, 
and I'm going to go to permissions again and I'm going to allow content pages to be allowed underneath the content page. So it can go multiple levels deep. So I'll save all that. So that's done now. So let's start taking what we've got on our index HTML file from the download that we did and we want to put that into our master template. So if I copy this and go to web base and paste that. So at the moment, this is the content. This has got all the markup from the home page, and that's how we're starting this. So it's got all the reference to the scale framework that it uses for the rendering of the grids. Uh, jQuery. Um, it's got all of the elements that are part of the home page, but we want to look at what is um, what about this website is common amongst both of the templates. So let's have a look. So if we go to the front end, if I do index.html. So we've got the navigation menu, that's common on both templates. We've got the footer as well, which is basically a contact form and then a bit of a footer here with a copyright statement. So first of all, I'm going to take those out and then whatever's left, I'm going to put as part of the home page. So we've got this part in the footer. So we do have a whole footer section and then we have the copyright statement. So really the footer itself, we have a contact form as well with that. So this form can be separate. So I'm gonna take this whole footer and be its own element first of all. So what I like to do with my partial views I like to put them in a separate folder as well. So I go another level deep. Uh, not everybody does this because it just requires a little bit of extra routing, but let's do this anyway. So site layout, I'm going to call this. And in the site layout, I'm going to have another partial view. So right clicked on the folder, go to add and then view. And I'm going to start this with an underscore. And that's what we do. Um, that's like the naming convention with MVC projects on a partial view. So this is going to be called footer. I'm going to create it as a partial view. It's empty without a model. Click on add. And then once that's done it for me, I'll be able to go back into this index template and I will um, cut that out. So if I go to index, I'll grab this whole section and then I'll put that into there. Also, what I like to do on partial views is just do an at inherits Umbrico view page. Save that. And then to make sure that that gets called on the master template, I'm going to load that master template so I'll refresh this so that the, these views that we've added can be seen and then I need to go down to where the footer was on this and in here I need to do at html dot render act, uh, render partial and then I choose um, site layout footer dot CSHTML. I need to wrap that inside some curly braces as well. So that will call the footer partial. And as I was saying, I need to sort out the navigation as well. So that one needs to be in its own view. So I'm going to cut that out. I'm going to create a partial inside site layout for that. So add view. Call that main navigation. Paste that in there. 
And again, I'm just going to put in at inherits Umbrico view page. So with partial views, either do at model and then the model. But if you want to uh, be able to use some of the Umbrico context and things like that, then it's good to use at inherits Umbrico view page. And you can still pass in a model in here inside the angle brackets. But at the moment, we don't have a model. So we've got the main navigation there. So in the web base where we called the footer, we can copy this and where we had the navigation, we can put it there and then we can reference that in here, main navigation. So, um, that is probably also needed in there. So I'm going to take this out as well and put that inside the main navigation. So it's basically like the header, but that's fine. That can go in there. Um, so they're the most com common elements. The rest of this is all relevant to the home page. So I'm going to cut all of this out from the template master template. And I'm going to just do at HTML.render body. Or is it just at render body? It might just be at render body. Yeah, sorry. At render body. And that means that I can then put this on the home template. So if I now go into the content of Umbrico and create that page, click on content and choose home and I'll just put in home save and publish that will create the page I can click on this link to see what that looks like on the front end and see if I've got any errors so we do have some errors uh, so it's complaining that it can't find main navigation and I don't know if you've spotted the error but I didn't start it with an underscore so let's find those references in web base. So that should start with underscore and so should footer. So let's go back and refresh. So the partial view main navigation was not found. So what have I done wrong now? In site layout, I've got CSHTML on the end when I don't need it. Sorry about that. But this is good to see these sorts of errors because you get to see what can happen and how to solve it. You might have done the same, but now we've got a navigation here working and we've got the footer in there as well. So this is the actual home page using that master template and then the content from the home page inside it now it looks like i have got a bit of a bug here because i've got a a random closing div from somewhere so i'm just going to find out where that's from so i'm going to undo everything on here at the moment just to find out where that closing div started and where i missed that out from so if i just click on that div so there is an id of wrapper that i need to um get and make sure that that stays on. So I'm going. That, that was me doing Control Z to undo. I'm going to do redo to put it all back. And then for, I think I put that wrapper inside the home page at the top. I'm going to take this wrapper and I'm going to put it back on web base. Actually, let's just have a look again. Where did the wrapper start? Did it start above the navigation or not? So it started after the menu was called. Right, that's fine. So I just redo everything again. So I need the wrapper to start there. 
so that I'm rendering the body and the footer. So that seems a bit unusual, but I've got to work with the template that I've been given. If you're doing this as a profession, you get given the front end template like I do at work, and then I have to turn that into a content managed system. So these are the things. Usually I would have found that this would be inside the wrapper, but that's fine. Let's just check on the generic template that there is also a wrapper, and there is, so that's fine. It is common, so it's okay. So if we refresh the page again, should all still work? And that's fine. So what's next? So we have got the web base. So we've got our master template there. So we've got some JavaScript code here. Is that the same on the generic template? Let's have a look. Yes, it looks like it's the same on the generic template as well. And the CSS on the generic is just that with some um, fixes for IE. And the CSS on there is the same as well. So when it comes to the content template, all I need to do is just put whatever is inside after, so from this main part here down to the footer. So this is all relevant to just the content template. So I'm going to cut that out. No, not cut. I don't need to cut it. I'll just copy that and go into the content template and paste that in there. So that is all the content that is in that. So if we go to Umbrico, we can add a content page. And I'm going to call it generic just for continuity purposes. Save and public. Click on the link. So we've got generic page. Now you may have noticed that the image hasn't shown up now. So this is probably just to do with the relative pathing. Um, so what we need to do to fix that, we just need to check where the images folder is. And we just need to start that with a slash really. And then refresh. And the image is back. So now we've got our content template working and it, all it has now is just this content part. So you can imagine we'll be using the rich text editor or the content grid to put this in dynamically here. And on the home page, we're going to have different sections. We're going to slice these up into partial views shortly. Um, but yeah, we've got the site layout um, partial view. So the main things are the footer and the um, the navigation and they are separated out now. So the next thing to do is to separate these ones out, the intro and the other elements that are part of the home page. So let's just go to home. So we have an intro, we have say the services tab, we've got this like featured or spotlight section. This could be your um, testimonials block, and then you've got your contact form. So let's just split those out again into the separate elements. So on home, I'm going to just do cut this out. I'm going to put this in a folder. I'm going to call it content because I want it to be available elsewhere. It doesn't just have to be relevant to home. And I'm going to say this is a partial view inside the content folder. And this is going to be intro. Create as a partial view, add. Paste that in there and then take at inherits Umbrico view page. It's not critical at this point, but I just like to do it as I do these. So that's the intro. So just for, to be sure that I've done it right, I'm going to copy this, go into home, paste it in, change where it needs to look. So look in content and look in intro. Now refresh the home page, make sure I don't have an error. So we've got the home page, it's loaded up the intro. 
That's great. So let's move on to the next section. So this one I'm going to call services. So I'm going to put that in content as well. So add view underscore services, create as a partial view, add, paste that in, copy, inherit Sunbrico view page. So that's the services one, and we can just, again, copy that, paste that in, in place of where it used to be. Save that, and then let's move on. So this is moving on to the featured or spotlight. I think they're calling it spotlight in here, class spotlight, so let's call it spotlight as well. So. The front end developer is referring to the same thing as I am. Again, just repeat the same process, add view, partial view, underscore spotlight, create as a partial view, add, paste that in there. copy that in, paste it in there. And then in the home template, just call underscore spotlight as well. Give it a refresh just to make sure we're not ruining anything or breaking anything. It's good to find out at the point when you do it rather than later down the line. But yes, it's still rendering it, it's still working. Then we'll call this one testimonial and that will be everything from the home page. Um, add a view underscore testimonial I mean it doesn't have to be maybe I could just call it um, image background content so yeah it's not restricted to just testimonials then so add that paste that in there And then we'll just put that in as well. And that's, we've been consistent then. Save that and call it on the home page template. And this one is called image background content, I think. Yeah. Control Shift S to save all. Give it a refresh and we should find that it's all working. So just to show you that it is actually working and it's not just magic or it's not looking at the wrong thing, I'm just going to paste in some content there. I'll just type in some random content. So that's going to come in underneath the reflex title. Yeah, so that's gone in there. So that's showing you that it is rendering it from the partial view that we've added. And then also to show you how this is good, so we could put this spotlight section on the content template. Maybe we could have it before some before the other parts. We could just render the spotlight section. So if I go to slash generic, which is the name of the page and the URL that it's generated, it's now actually got the um, spotlight section. And again, we have the issue with the images. So um, we're going to dynamically generate those URLs soon, but for now, I'm just going to fix those in this spotlight bit. So I'm going to do a control H and I'm going to look for quote image, well, images, and replace it with quote slash images so that it fixes that. I'm going to go into all of these partial views and do that. So now wherever these are called, they will render it correctly.
So that's all done. So if we refresh this page now, the images are correctly pathed and they can show up. So obviously I don't want that above um, generic page uh, content. So I can take that off or I could put it below like that. And on, so if I refresh, so the page starts now with the proper title and then you can have that after it. And then it's got the contact form. And on the home page, I could reorder some of these as well. So maybe we want the services to come after Spotlight. So if we go to the home page. So we've got that there. Then we've got Spotlight. Then we've got the services. Then we've got the image background. And then we've got that. So that was just showing you how you could change the order of it. But I think it looks better. It does look better that way around. So I'm going to keep it that way around. So that's it really. That's the aim of this um, one was to slice everything up and put it into uh, partial views. I'm going to remove the spotlight one from here because we don't need it. I've not sliced this up because really what I'm going to end up doing is just deleting that or especially that and just calling render content or something like that on the content page so um, that's going to stay like that I'm not splitting that into separate partial views for that page it's mainly this one that is so yeah that's this video so I hope you enjoy following it along if you are enjoying it and you like the video please click on like subscribe to my channel um, feel free to leave any comments um, if you've got any questions about what I've done so far or what you'd like to do in future videos um, whilst you're following along with the series and you know please do leave some comments I'll be happy to read them and answer them and who knows men maybe mention you in future videos as well throughout this series um, yeah so thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you on the next episode thanks bye